Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com. Today we have a hand from a $1,500 buy-in, half no limit, half PLO tournament. If you play PLO and no limit hold'em anywhere near decently, you should be in these mixed game tournaments because very often what happens is some number of the players play one of the two games very poorly. And this is um, extrapolated a bit, even in mixed games, where you'll have some players who are, let's say, really good at seven card stud, but really bad at everything else. And if you are pretty strong in all of the games, or at least the vast majority of the games, you need to be in there. Don't be afraid to play a tournament if you you know, aren't the absolute best player in the world at one of the various games. Anyway, here we have a raise to 500. We're playing No Limit Hold'em in this hand. We're playing about 100 big blinds deep. So we have a 2.5 big blind raise from the hijack, a call from the small blind. I have 10 8 of hearts in the big blind, and I am always calling here. There's no point in 3-betting. If you 3-bet, better hands are going to call, worse hands are going to fold. Obviously, you can get some hands like king-9 offsuit to fold, but that's not a great success. And whenever you're out of position, you want to keep the pots manageable. So let's call with our hand that flops well. Really, whenever you have a hand that flops well, you don't want to do anything to mess that up. So just call. We flop a flush draw. It comes king-7-3, two hearts. Some people will lead in this scenario, and I mean, I guess if I had to develop a leading range, this would be an okay hand to do it with. I mean, I guess a hand like 6-5 would be better. But the times you want to be leading are when, first off, no one has a range or a nut advantage, or you have the range or nut advantage. But in this scenario, the hijack, when the hijack raises, hijack should have a whole lot of big cards, right? And also, if you think about the small blind calling range, small blind should have a whole lot of big cards. Small blind should be 3-betting very often, especially when there's a good player in the big blind. That said... A lot of people don't adhere to that strategy. They just call all sorts of junk. But this is a spot where Hijack has pocket aces in their range. They have pocket kings. They have pocket sevens. They have pocket threes. They have ace king, king queen, right? They have all the nut hands. Whereas I would basically always three bet aces and kings preflop. So I'm missing some of the nut hands in my range. So this is a spot where we can check very frequently and kind of count on the Hijack betting if they are decently competent in the spot with a wide range of hands that have any equity at all. So... I'm just going to check. Hijack bets 900. Small blind calls. And now we have another decision. We can either call or fold. I'm sorry, call, fold, or raise. But we're definitely not folding. Folding is out of the question because we have a flush draw and we're getting good odds. Don't fold when you have a flush draw and you're getting good odds. Um, next concern is that we're out of position. So when you're out of position with a draw, you're going to find that you are often going to have a difficult time getting paid off if you do get there or when you do get there. So in situations like this, you very often would prefer to raise if your draw lacks showdown value. It's very important to realize if you don't have showdown value, what's going to happen is we're going to call this flop, or if we call the flop, and we get there on the turn, it's going to check through very frequently, which means the pot stays small, which is not what we want when we have an effective nut hand, right? And if we miss, what's going to happen is if the hijack does have a king, he's just going to keep betting, and that puts us in another spot where if we call the turn bet, we're going to be out of position with 10 high. So when we miss, it goes check, check, and we lose. And when we hit, it's going to go check, check, and we're going to win, but we don't win any more money. So when you're out of position with a draw, you very often want to be raising it when it lacks showdown value. If this was the nut flush draw, like say I had ace, jack of hearts, I would definitely call because then I can easily call a turn bet because ace high actually wins at the showdown sometimes. And when it does check down, I do win sometimes when the opponent was getting out of line with a hand like queen jack with a queen of hearts or something like that. So... That's usually how I'm thinking about these scenarios. And in this spot, I would raise with my weak flush draws. I would also raise with um, king seven, seven three suited, which I probably do have, um, pocket sevens and pocket threes. So that's going to be my strategy in this scenario. And it's going to be pretty tough to play against because either I have a nut hand that beats basically everything my opponents can have, or I have a draw that has plenty of equity. So that is a very difficult strategy to play against, and there's not a whole lot your opponents can do. So I like raising. There's a 900 bet and a call. Usually I'm going to be making it, in this scenario, about 3.5 times. Well, I'm usually making about three times my opponent's bet size if they make a reasonably sized bet. And here, 900 is reasonable enough. So I'd make it normally 2,700. But when someone calls in the middle, I'm going to be more inclined to add an additional unit on top. So a unit in this scenario is 900 chips. 2,700 plus 900 is 3,600. And that's basically what I do. I do 3,500. I could certainly be convinced that even a slightly bigger raise here is fine because with my best hands, I want to, well, get money against the good but second best hands. And I also want to protect against the various draws the opponents could have. So I could even see going a little bit bigger here being fine, like 4,000. 
but um, I definitely like raising in this spot. And I think this is a scenario where a lot of people go wrong by just calling. Because when they call, they just end up not winning pots that don't belong to them. And draws very often want to be able to win pots that don't belong to them. And you do that by bluffing. And the problem with the draw here like this is if we do miss, if we lead on any street, because we have 10 high, we don't actually generate a lot of fold equity because all the made hands just very easily will call. And even stuff like ace high will hero call because all the draws miss. When all the draws miss, your opponents should hero call a lot. And if your opponents are anywhere near competent, they will. So I do raise 3,500. If I get called, I'm going to be betting on a decent amount of the turns because like I already told you, I still have king seven, seven, three, sevens, threes, etc. in my range. And those hands will definitely want to keep betting the turn. So I'll keep betting with my worst flush draws, which this one's close to the bottom. And I'll keep betting with my nut hands. That's my strategy on the turn. This time, though, they both fold, which is great. And we just win the pot. So notice, in this scenario, we end up picking up, how much do we win? We win uh, 3,500 chips, 18 big blinds with no showdown, with a 10 high. And this is great. And this really does show you the power of playing these draws aggressively, because when your opponents don't have a great hand, or sometimes even when they do have a hand like king nine, they're just going to fold because they realize they're in such a bad spot immediately, and it's very often just going to keep getting worse and worse because I'm going to be barreling my money in. So that's going to be it for today's hand. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like and subscribe on YouTube. That goes a long way to helping YouTube know that you like my content. And if you like my content, well, maybe other people who want to learn poker and improve their lives would like the content too. So help all the people who you do not know out by clicking like and clicking subscribe. And it also helps me. It's very important to uh, do the little things to give back to the content creators. There are a lot of great content creators out there who devote tons of time, probably more than you think, to making free content because they just like doing it. And if they like doing it and you like it as well, share it with others. That is by far the best thing you can do to help all of them out. So good luck in your games, have fun, and I'll talk to you next time.